So yeah, fins away. I've just finished a deload, uh, four days worth of rest. What a weird sort of time because I feel like I said going into it, I didn't really feel like I needed it, but then like after a few days, I was like, oh, I actually have enjoyed like just less. Not not what long. have you done? Not really anything different, if I'm honest. It's been you literally the cinema. Was that? Um, no, that was no, literally my. I, I watched Last of Us with my mum. Yeah, Friday. Wednesday night. That was a, that was the first. Yeah, technically actually, but I didn't really count, count that as like because Thursday is usually a rest day. But yeah, I went to the cinema with uh, with Sanaya. With we watched, girl, uh, was it? With which uh, girl was it? Which girl? Yeah, Sanaya, my girlfriend of two years. God, thanks. It's me. It's two and a bit years now. She's mental. Um, so yeah, I went to watch Creed. Thought it was alright. To be fair, very much a cinema sort of film. And then Thursday we did the podcast. That was a bit of a long one. Friday I set up the. Uh, I did. I say set up. I didn't set up anything. I set up some training plans that will be probably or will be announced actually by the time this is out, so that was that. And then Saturday, uh, Liverpool played, I watched Last of Us with my mum, that's our Saturday level tradition. Did you um, enjoy a Liverpool game, we've not spoken no, about no, it? No, no, don't really want to speak about it, we lost to, to Bournemouth. And then Sunday was just a, a usual sort of like, I say work day, Sundays are chilled out. Sunday's like a day for, for me in the sense, so I get done by like 1pm, and I'm like, got all this time? What, what can I do? Do you though? Because no, because I still had stuff don't. to do. I had all the stuff in the evening, exactly. but I got to the point where, like, if I wanted to go for a walk, or yeah. if I, I could just like that. Yeah, like, I get to the middle of the day and I'm like, because we're set up. I did the setup for Sunday on, on Saturday. Yeah, so you it was can do almost, that when you do that. Yeah, so it was, it was part of it. But yeah, it was it was a nice nice four days worth of, of rest. Um, I dropped like a couple of kilos, which to be fair is expected. I was 103.9 kilos this morning, uh, which is pretty, pretty damn light. And I'm very flat, I'm very flat. Like it, the look post workout today was a bit of a, of a, a strange sort yeah, of. It was look. a good look, but it was a good look. You look like you look like you need to pull off more than you probably do. Yeah, if which is a bit full, of a head twist because I was 106 kilos like a week ago, and, and I was like, leaner. yeah, and I was like, ah, oh, I didn't, I didn't look lean. I just looked leaner relative to fullness. Yeah, I but, think if you were full now. You maybe be a kilo heavier. Yeah. So that'd be what one hundred four point nine. Yeah. Which, which is and you were one hundred six when you were four before. Yeah. So that's exactly right. Yeah. So, yeah, you'll be. I reckon, probably pull down to ninety eight. Yeah. But we were both like it's a, it's a strange look, and this is if anything how a prep or almost is. Last week I don't know if I spoke about this actually on the podcast. I don't know if I even mentioned it to you. I posed post workout Monday, and this was after at the Mecca uh, after push. Hashtag Mecca. Hashtag sorry. And, uh, sorry, Tony Mecca. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Tony Mecca. It's just what people get confused with what the actual hashtag Mecca is. So the actual hashtag Mecca, a pose post workout. Again, interrupt me if I've said this before. And I was like, I looked to myself and I was like, oh, I actually look pretty good. I was actually really happy with how I looked. And then Tuesday, we did the video with Sam and I trained legs. And I posed in the exact same posing room. And I looked to myself and I didn't even mention it to Sanai or Finn, but I was in my head like, I look awful. Yeah, like, what, you, you trained legs no, no, no. before you trained Oh, 100%. Push. And for like the rest of the session or like the rest of like the day, the drive home, I was in like a more down mood because I was like, I look awful. And then. Oh, you got to be careful. Yeah, no, exactly. Realize. And I was in like a real, not like a, not a bad mood, but I just thought to myself, what's happened? Even though I know exactly what's happened, I'm not full, I haven't trained that kind of muscle group. And then I got sent the reel that Sam sent, uh, through, sent through to me of me posing, and I go, oh, I actually look. Pretty good. Like, yeah, pretty well. Yeah, yeah, to, <laughs> even though it's a video photo, it's yeah. to just put loads of lighting in. No, uh, it is, that is something and that that's like literally part of it. So today, for example, it was a good look relative to condition, but I don't look any tighter because I'm less full. I think that's one one benefit of having a coach. Yes, hundred percent. Is that if you have a certain check-in day, yeah. obviously that should be the same each week. It might not always be, but let's say you have a certain check-in day, like you're not obsessing over how you look every single day you're just like oh here are my photos like kind of let me know if anything's changed or if i need to change anything um and then obviously the further throughout prep it becomes more frequent and you will be analyzing every day but i think for you right now like obviously we pose post-workout anyway which is probably a bad thing when it comes to like psychology and trying to not overthink things it's a good thing in terms of practicing posing but it's not a good thing when it comes to overanalyzing your physique. Like, you're you're probably in a position now where you'd, you'd actually benefit from posing twice a week. Yeah. But we're in a good routine where you pose every yeah. session, and, yeah. and you should because you're practicing posing. You always yeah. want to do it with your eyes closed, like, yeah, yeah, or yeah. do it without a mirror. Yeah. Like exactly. Instead of booking and assessing every single day, because like, yeah. you do change every day as well, especially when you've got more muscle, yeah. and especially post deload, like 
you will change every day. That's why, like, 10 minutes pre-stage, you'll be so on. Oh, yeah. And, and then, then, then all of a sudden you step on stage, it's like, what's happened? Oh, it's so rarely it. backstage. But, yeah, it's part of it. Like, at the end of the day, it's going to be a bit of a... But it, it's, it's a good sort of kind of viewpoint in the sense of, if we think about a deload, so it's four days' worth of rest day food, it's increased cardio, it's steps being a touch higher, not intentionally, but just because I'm not training, so I can have my steps just a little bit higher based off routine and what I was doing. And, uh, and as a result, when you drop two kilos like, and you've not trained, of course it's going to be a different look. So in my head, I'm like, I'm 103.9 kilos. That's pretty lean. That's uh, probably pretty light. And I look at myself and I'm like, well, I'm not as full. And as a result of that, the skin looks like, we said about my midsection, like my skin looked almost thicker because my midsection wasn't as kind of, makes sense. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't as full in the sense of somewhat food volume, but then also as well glycogen in the sense the of best how things sit. Well, the way that I kind of try and explain it to clients is like, ultimately, like let's say peak fullness versus like being flat. Like yeah. the best way to explain it is like as a balloon. Yeah. It's like if you think of a balloon, like it's still the same balloon, whether you blow it up or not, it's still the same balloon. It just looks yeah. very, very different. But it's the same in essence, it is the same thing. It's just got more or in a sponge. It. Like if you imagine a sponge that's soaking wet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but that is a sponge that is isn't a sponge that's not soaking wet is probably bigger. True. Yeah. So a balloon's the best. Yeah. Use balloon yeah. analogy, guys. Don't use the sponge analogy. Okay. The sponge in terms of the muscle soaking up glycogen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, like if you imagine a muscle under your skin, uh, a, a balloon under your skin, yeah. the more pumped up that balloon is, the thinner your skin's going to look. Exactly. Your, your, your skin hasn't changed, but it just looks thinner. Yeah. And the the more deflated that balloon is, the thicker your skin's going to look. And you, you, you're like, where's the muscle or where's the balloon? Yeah. But it's just based on fullness and obviously muscle size as well. Like, and then also things such as like fatigue. Like, I think this is something again people don't really worry about. Or they do, they do worry about, but they don't really understand. Like, I remember like last prep, my legs like five days out had like so I was doing daily cardio, steps were stupidly high, food was really really low, and I was battered. I remember looking at my leg detail and I was like. My legs are really soft. Let me guess, did they come to life? No, genuinely, and I don't know, like, just like literally three or four days of, of lesser activity, they these lines steps, they and I remember like looking at them like three or four days later, and I was like, I've, like, it was almost like if I put a transformation, it looked like a six week transformation, but it was just because the inflammation kind of disappeared from them. So pretty much it's one of them where like fatigue, inflammation, all that sort of jazz will definitely play a role with, uh, with how the physique looks. But if I'm trying to like, let's say, have a look at how things are going to be moving forward, it's, de it's a devolume session um, or rotation, should we say, for the first two to three sessions of the week. Uh, so devolume push. Today was a weird session in the sense of like, Three pressing sets. Yeah, JP MVMT. Yeah, yeah JP MV, MV, MVMT. Is Movement. It? Yeah. yeah, there we go. So we had him uh, jumping with us. He's also it's training with us tomorrow, isn't he? At yeah. The, uh, at the Mecca for. Hey. Yeah. Hashtag Mecca, Jesus. Hey. Christ, sorry. I don't feel like it goes well in a combo, like hashtag Mecca. I feel I like. I can't say Mecca. Okay. If I hear someone say Mecca without a hashtag in front, I'm like, what's okay. that? Okay. But not okay. that is. Yeah, so. Yeah, so plan of action most likely, training day food, but not training day demands in the sense of a volume. So I'm hoping that body weight kind of creeps yeah, It'll be a lot full in there. It'll be, yeah, days. the next foot, few days. Like my, my, my training day food really isn't that high. What is All it? Things what is your training food? day food? Like 358 carb and then like 37 fat. It's like 2,850 calories. Well, my non-training day food is 2,002. So, and cardio is like 10 minutes less. So. I'm hoping with how things work, like body weight will creep back up, which it should do just through inflammation and likewise fullness. Um, and if it can go back up to like 100, like mid 104s and hold that, that'd be good. And then I can kind of assess and see. But I think the rate of loss, like a kilo to a kilo and a half, with how it has been, it has been more than that. So I'm hoping it slows down. If not, then I'll just implement some, some refeed days, like uh, literally back to back refeed days, most likely, which to be fair, I had scheduled in from like six to seven weeks anyway. So that would be two weeks from now. So they might have to go in a bit earlier in the sense of maybe next week, uh, potentially the weekend if, if body weight continues to drop. But this prep, when it comes to body weight, it's been really, really weird in the sense of like, I said again, I said this on the last podcast, it's just held and then it just drops and it's really, really odd in comparison. But that being said, not every prep's the same. It's not odd, like, no, it's think not, how many times you see that happen with clients. It's no, quite but common. when it comes to myself, if I was to assess all previous data, granted, I've not had a prep in the same sort of situation. I'm doing more and I'm eating less than I wasn't like six weeks out last time. So it's more aggressive. But it's quite funny how all previous diets, even in the summer, was just gone. Like it was very much a case of linear, like 0.2 of a kilo here. I'd like actually say it's more common how it's happening now. Yeah, I'd, I'd like say with most people, yeah. you yeah, see exactly. it like hold, 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 drop, or hold, 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 make a change, drop. Yeah. 
people are very well. A lot of people have a very adaptive metabolism where yeah. you don't make any changes. Nothing changes. Do you know what? Like because I ran, change. I ran the maintenance phase, I ran a oh, pullback. Really so so therefore, fresh. so responsive. But to be fair, I actually do feel like genuinely this is the most responsive I've, I've been in a, in a diet. Hundred percent. That maintenance block must have been that maintenance block. That pullback that I did in Canada, where me and Sam and I were having truffle fat potatoes <laughs> that I had about three of that cost so much money. So yeah, that, all the Canadian food, mate. That was what it was. I was like, set you up. Yeah, for 25, 25, steps, three meals a day, and me probably under eating on my calories. You know what? That's, that's more optimal than actually training hard and getting stronger and eating food. Oh really? Yeah. I, I thought, Especially well, before a prep. Yeah. yeah do, before though. a prep, you can't train hard. Like no, you, you can't eat either. You can't eat. Stop eating. It's too fatiguing. <laughs> it's too fatiguing. So yeah, that that's pretty much the situation I'm at. Fin's going away. I think that kind of. That's everything. Do you want to yeah. get into the questions? Yeah, 